Sometimes a mediocre snare sound isn't because of bad tuning. A lot of times the snare wires themselves are the culprit. Today we're going to compare cheap snare wires with nicer snare wires and we'll also see if we can find that perfect snare tension sweet spot. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're now going to jump down to the kit. The wires that we're going to be comparing today are the Pure Sound 24 strand brass snare wires with a set of stock snare wires that came with one of my 14 inch snares, I'm not sure which one. Um, they are probably steel snare wires. Both old wires and new wires are 24 strand. The new ones happen to be brass, old ones happen to be steel. What I find interesting about snare tuning is how the snare wires themselves can sometimes determine whether or not a snare feels cheap or nice, uh, regardless of tuning. I've messed around with a couple of cheap snares before where I'll get the top head in tune, I'll get the bottom head in tune. I'll try to even get the tension right with the snare wires, but it still just doesn't feel right. And then I put a new set of snare wires on and it sounds great. So we're gonna compare these two different sets of wires. You may or may not notice a huge difference. This will just be interesting to compare uh, because chances are if you buy a snare, it's gonna come with some kind of stock wires. And then if you buy a new set, I always like buying the Pure Sound wires. By the way, they didn't sponsor this video. They're not paying me to say this. I just like Pure Sound. Anytime I put new snare wires on either of my snares, Pure Sound is always the way to go. And I like the brass ones too over the steel ones. That's a good, relatively cheap upgrade you can make to a snare if you're not happy with your snare sound. Having said all that, let's do a quick sound test. We've got the stock snare wires on there now, so we're gonna listen to the snare with the stock wires, then we're gonna switch them out for the Pure Sound, see how those compare, and then from there we'll talk about uh, snare tension. Could you hear a difference? That was actually pretty subtle. Um, these stock wires are not bad at all. They actually sound pretty decent. A lot of times the older the wires get, the stiffer they can be. And sometimes there might even be some corrosion or something on them that'll really mess with the sound. So I've seen some pretty bad ones. These actually aren't bad. So you might not have even noticed a difference there. We'll see if I notice a difference when I edit this audio and listen to it through my speakers uh, more closely. It's possible that the wires that you've got on your snare are just fine, they might sound okay. That's gonna be something that you'll have to test out. You could compare your snare with, okay, how did mine sound with these and decide, all right, should I make a wire upgrade or not? Sometimes that can play a big role in the overall quality of the snare sound. But let's say, okay, wires are fine. Right now we've got the pure sound on here, so we'll leave those on and we'll start playing around with tension. Our goal here is to see if there is a sweet spot, like what's the perfect snare tension that really is an all-purpose snare tension that works for most music that we're playing. I like the spot where I just had it, you guys might have liked it too, um, that could be a sweet spot. But there are a lot of variables, a lot of factors that really play into how tight should the snares be, from the tempo of the song to the way we have the drum tune. So that's kind of where we're going with this. The big question to ask yourself is how do you want your snare to feel to the listener? And to unpack that a little more, What's the tempo of the song that you're playing and how is your snare tuned? A lot of times, we'll start talking about tuning. If the snare is tuned really low, a lot of times looser snare wires seem to fit that better. A lot of times a low tuned snare with tight wires can be weird. Whereas low tuning with loose snares kind of gives it a big punch, like thuddy kind of feel that can feel really good. Let's play around with that. I'm gonna tune the snare down some and we'll listen to it with loose wires and then with tight wires. <laughs> 
But basically what I, what I wanted to show you there is how nice a really low snare sounds with loose snare wires. You can tighten them up, but I feel like it chokes the drum up a little too much when the snare wires are tight, when the top head is tuned down. Um, it's just a different sound. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. There definitely aren't any uh, right or wrongs here, but I think generally as a guideline, the lower you have the snare tuned, the looser you want the wires. Now on the flip side of this, let's say we're tuning the snare higher. Maybe we've got a really high tuned snare. That's where a lot of times it makes more sense to tension the wires a little bit tighter. So let's try that. So again, you may agree or disagree, it's all up to personal taste, but I feel like when the snare's tuned up higher, it's a more natural sound. It, it just feels more natural to the ear as I'm playing it to have the snares tighter, so it kind of fits with that shorter, more poppy kind of sound. Whereas when the snares are looser, it's kind of this weird combination of hearing a high ring from the drum and a short sound, but with a long tail. And so it's just kind of odd. So again, if you want to create a unique sound, maybe that's the way to do it. But Generally, when you've got the snare tuned high, a, a snare tension sweet spot is gonna be tighter. When the snare is tuned low, that snare tension sweet spot is probably gonna be looser. Now, before we talk any more about tension sweet spot, where you have your snare wires tension can also be determined by the tempo of the song. In a way, when you loosen your wires, it's kind of like adding reverb to your snare. It's sort of like you can literally add the feeling, the perception of reverb, even on a live gig when your drums aren't even mic'd, which is kind of cool. And that works really well for a slower song. Like if you've got a slow song with a slow gah, gah, kind of backbeat, it makes sense to give that sound a little bit of a tail, which you can do by loosening the wires. But you kind of, you want to follow the same rule that engineers will follow with adding reverb. You don't want for the tail of that sound to last all the way past the next time you create that sound again. So let's say we're playing this. So that sounded kind of like a muddy mess, right? Uh, because the wires were so loose that they were just constantly buzzing the whole time because the note length was so long. So that's the equivalent of, let's say you're mixing drums and you're putting a reverb on a snare and that reverb is just too long and so it just gets all washy and just messes up the mix. So in the same way that an engineer is gonna trim that reverb down to cut off before the next backbeat, that's what we wanna do too. And so for that quick groove, we definitely wanna have tighter snare wires. And I would even go a little bit tighter than that. So you kind of get the idea here that the faster we're going, the more snare notes there are, and especially the, the less space between the backbeats, the tighter we want to have the wires. Whereas if we're playing something really slow, and so on, and it also makes it easier to create a really nice sounding roll when you've got that extra snare buzz to help you out, to help you smoothen your roll. So that's really the big part that tempo plays in this, where slow tempos, you might want a looser snare wire, fast tempos, you might want tighter snare wires. So that's just something to keep in mind, and that's something you can change relatively quickly on a gig between songs. I do that all the time where 
I'll think, okay, we got a quick song coming up next. I'm going to tighten them up just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then, okay, we got the slow ballad. I'm going to pull them back. So having discussed all of that, we've kind of already come up on our answer of what's the snare sweet spot. But to get more specific and to really say, okay, is there a sweet spot? Let's say we've got the snare tuned to this medium tempo. Let's say that maybe there isn't even time to adjust the, the snare tension between songs and we've got to pick one and keep it there. What is the sweet spot? Well, I can show you what my sweet spot is, but your sweet spot might be different. You might have a different opinion. You might have your own preference. And so you've got to try it out with your snare. Here's what I think it is on mine. I'm just going to play around, move around a little bit, and you'll hear me kind of go looser, tighter, and then we'll zero in on a spot I like. I really like that right there. I think that's probably more on the tight side than the loose side. That would sound okay in a slow song, although I'd probably want to loosen it. It would sound fine in a fast song. Basically, my sweet spot is where I think there's just enough of that snare buzz to give the, the snare sound a little bit of note length, a little bit of thickness, a little bit of body, some sizzle, um, but it, there's not so much of it that I couldn't play a fast song. If I had to play something fast with that tension, it would work. If I had to play something slow, that would still work. I do think if I were playing something really fast, I'd want to go just a hair tighter, but I think that is the best compromise where if I'm going to play something slow, that still works. Hey, just a side note real quick before you turn off the video because you can tell that I'm wrapping up. Um, the snare tension actually affects the perceived pitch of the drum. Let's say you've got the snare wires really tight. That's kind of the equivalent of putting your, your finger on the rack tom. where the amount of pressure you're putting with your hand on the drum head increases the tension of the head and therefore increases the pitch. The same thing's really happening with the snare wires on the underside on a lesser scale, but when you've got the snare wires tighter, it's really choking up that underside head a little bit, which is in turn tuning it up just barely. So really when you've got your snares tight, there's gonna be a perception that your, your snare is tuned higher, which is kind of a cool thing. When they're lower, there's gonna be a little bit more depth coming from your snare because that resonant head has a little more space to vibrate. So that's just something else interesting to keep in mind. It's something to play around with. There's a ton of sound possibilities here. If, if you've gained anything from this discussion, this demonstration, it should be that you can get a bunch of different sounds out of your snare without having to retune it just by how you have your snare wires tensioned. And that should be affected or determined by tempo where you have your snare tuned and really just your personal preference. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out another previous video on snare tuning that will give you some more info on this topic if you're interested. And if you enjoyed this video and you haven't yet joined the non-glamorous community, be sure to do so. Hit that subscribe button, share the video. Take care, guys, and I will see you next week.